effective and inspirational being different. Yeah. Effective and inspirational being different. Exactly. Effective? Yeah. 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 We're a little expect, you know, yeah. How about the new woman who just took over England? Inspirational? No, she's not. Okay. Um, okay. Now let's let's go to the next one. inspirational. I think so. <laughs> Does the American public think so? I think it depends on the media that you look at. Well, so the media does make a difference in this case, though. I think most of them say she's not inspirational. Okay. I mean, with, when you compare her speech to Michelle Obama's speech. Okay. Yeah, Michelle Obama was definitely inspirational. Okay, though she says I'm never going to run for president. <coughs> okay, but but she is not. But look at what she says about the president. Okay, this is a New York a New Yorker article from eight years, eight nine years ago. That is a chief executive officer who has to be able to manage and run the bureaucracy. Okay, if Hillary becomes president, she's going to run that country. Is that what Merkel does? Is that what Thatcher did? Yeah. But is she inspirational? Now, look at what she was wearing. Think about what she wears now. Very gentle in comparison. And the blue is associated with trust, is that not? Yeah. So blue, okay, and? She's trying to portray like the mother now as well, you know, like really the grandmother, like she cares. So now she looks much more like a grandmother, yeah, right? She's never, she's never worn a regular suit. She's always into a pantsuit, as is Merkel, right? As is Merkel, right? And she looks a little more mannish, doesn't she? Yes. Like she can be more acceptable and less feminine. That, she looks pretty feminine mm -hmm. nine years ago. And she's also nine years younger. Okay, than she is now. All right? But dress and what they say, right? That's a nonverbal way of communicating. So colors and what we wear. Okay? Um, I didn't, as a chair and a dean, I never wore jeans and I dressed down Friday. And I wore slacks. Okay, I might wear school colors. Okay, but I just didn't feel like I was going to be able to represent the school if I was wearing jeans like everybody else. Right? So you have to think about that. If you're going into a different culture, you have to make sure how you're dressing and what it means to another person. Okay, um, my husband and I were on a family trip and we were in En I hope you all get to En if you haven't already been there. It's a lovely place. And they have these beautiful little pond, pools with, with um, you know, uh, uh, waterfalls. And in the summer, it's really lovely. Um, and we were alone in this little pool and I was in a bathing suit. Um, and there was a man around um, making approaches to me sexually with my husband and son there. But in his culture, wearing that little nothing meant that I was open. Mm. Okay? We had a student last year who was went from Bulgaria to Turkey. Okay, and when she was in Turkey, she was being approached in a Christian wearing shorty shorts, and she had, you know, kind of like an American traveling. Well, she was in a country where looking like that meant different things. So as we even go through, right, as we go through and we travel, okay, it makes a difference. And men don't have that much, right? Men don't have to worry about those things. So that's another way of communicating. So what about our styles? So we already talked about some of them. We're more communal, okay? As a woman leader, I'd have coffee with my staff. We would have Friday afternoons tequila parties. Mm -hmm. I got invited. Okay. Um, however, when we speak up, sometimes we're considered control groups. Okay. When the men speak up, they're passionate. When I'm passionate, people think, you know, there she goes again. I need to control something. Um, we try to transform by giving support. I'm very positive of what people are doing. Again, not everybody, but in general. And men tend to be corrective. So think about your evaluation for your job. Okay? Think about that. Okay? Women are more likely to say, Sally, you know, enjoy the way that you're doing a good job, but there are a few things I'd really like you to think about and doing better. Um, 
really supporting you in this. And you know, there may be a, 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 a development session that we can send you to to you know have a better communication between some of you know some folks on the telephone. You know, versus men who are more likely to say, Sally, you're not doing a very good job. So we'll get better. Right? I mean, that's not, again, 100%. But they're more likely to be corrective versus supportive. Okay? Just do this better. Um, so, this is me. What? If a woman does this, is it bad? So if a woman does this, she is called a bitch. A bitch. Right. <laughs> At least in modern American lingo. Okay? Right? Right? So in English lingo, that would be a word that a lot of people don't like, but she would be criticized. I can't tell you how many times I've been criticized, okay, because I've corrected bad behavior. Right? And I've tried doing it this way, but you know, when I open my mouth and I talk to a man and I try to do this, how often do they interpret it? <coughs> and now if you've been corrected by a male, what happens? Most people accept it, well, that's just the way it is. You're being real quiet. Got any examples mm -hmm. of any of this? Um, I mean, it's pretty common in tricky to men being the more dominant than the woman obeying to what the man has to say. So now I'm going to take you back. That was perfect. Okay, I'm going to take you back to this word up here, agenda, because it's a word that most people don't know, and I came across this as I was looking at things. So associated with agentic qualities, agentic just means as we're part of what we produce, and what we produce is part of us, okay? But when they use that word in describing a leader, it's basically doing what you're expected to do. So two weekends ago, we had some really good friends visit us, friends of 45 years. And, um, he is getting, he's a leader, and he is getting two awards over the next six months, major awards. And I looked at his wife, who I've known a long time, and, you know, he's been very successful. She even packs a suitcase, okay, when he goes away, right? We don't pack each other's suitcases, okay? Mm -hmm. And she's been known to pick him up with the family in the car, everything's packed, at work, so he doesn't have to do anything and just pick him up for work and off they go on vacation. Okay, so she's a really good answer. And, and I said something like, congratulations, it's really nice that he's getting these two awards. And she said to me, well, you know, he's always been the good boy. Okay, how many of you in the room consider yourselves the good girl? I wish I had Diego here so I could ask her if he knew you know the good boy. Who's the good girl? Anybody considers themselves the good girl? Think about people you know who are the good girls. How, how would you describe them? They're very quiet, docile, very kind. Very kind, docile. Like the all-American, like good Christian girl. That's what I think of. They do what's expected of them, and they do what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And okay. usually that linear path as well. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, how about how about a turkey? What's the good girl? Um, it's pretty similar. Yeah? Um, yeah? I mean, that's like obey. What? Obey. Obey, right. You're supposed to obey. You're not the good girl. So uh, can you yeah. talk about the good Palestinian girl? She's supposed to listen to her parents, and uh, if they don't want her to go to school, she doesn't go to school. She gets married. Yeah. Okay, I'm not the good girl. I went to school, I did all those things, but I talk about what I feel, and I do what I think is right. That's not always what my boss wanted, right? That makes it tougher for me as a leader, right? Right? I'm not thought of as the good girl. Let's put the good girl up for the award, okay? For women leaders, was Hillary a good girl? She was off fighting for all kinds of stuff. She had a black man on her arm during, you know, some of the political upheavings earlier in her life. You know, if you go back and look at some of the leaders, boy, they were tough. They were fighting in the underground. They were partisans in the woods. Okay, so I mean, being a good guy, 
So what about the dilemma? Well, we'll talk uh, later. I know that uh, my husband will talk more about followers and leaders. If you have to work in an organization, you need to be a good follower. All right? You do have to obey some things. But you can't make trouble all the time. Um, or you have to find a new organization. Right? Because you can't make trouble all the time. But an effective leader, okay, knows how to channel people, knows how to use that energy that people have, okay, to be even better. All right? And so our goal for all the leaders is to not only be a good follower up to a point, as I've said to people, I will fall on my sword for my integrity. All right? You know, I will, I will not go beyond that. If somebody's making me do something that I think is wrong, I will not do that. And if that meant my job, it meant my job. Right? On the other hand, when I tried to be the leader, I tried to get those people who were a little verbal or, you know, would get to see if I could really funnel them and get that energy, okay, to work together. Because that would make an effective leader. So, who knew anything about gold in my ear? <coughs> Got any Israelis here? Or others? Yeah. Well, I'm not Israeli, but I think she was the first prime minister of Israel. Yeah. The first female prime minister. Female. Mm -hmm. Give me a bit of the only. Is it another one? She's the only one. She's the only one. Tell me about Golda. She's American, right? She fought. Uh, she what? She was. Um, slang, she was a tough cookie. <laughs> she was a tough cookie to use slang. Yeah. Very tough cookie. Okay, she gave up a family. Mm -hmm. Right? Smoking. You ever see, you know, she was a smoker? She yeah. asked for things. Like she wasn't afraid to, mm -hmm. like, request what she knew she needed. So she went to America and raised the funds that she needed to support the army of Israel. Mm -hmm. Did she make some mistakes? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think I think that history has reflected back that, that that she made some mistakes. Was she was she like Barack? Was she visionary and you know inspiring? Not particular. Okay, did they need a tough leader? They did. Though now I think history says that some of those those decisions were wrong. How about Margaret Thatcher? Controversial. Controversial. Headstrong. <laughs> Did she have a uh, anything? The Iron Lady. The Iron Lady. Right. The Iron Lady. And how about Eleanor Roosevelt? That that thing, I mean that goes back, you know, before me. What do you know about Eleanor Roosevelt? Anybody? She's not independent, mm -hmm. but she's also always there for her husband. But she was also known as a very strong leader. She sort of, I think, mean, comes across as that precursor to what we see today in modern, like Rochelle, Michelle Obama, in that there's a lot of wisdom, and people respected her because of that wisdom, but she was also a very strong figure. So there's that balance of inspiration and strength. Yeah, I think you're both right. Yeah, I think Eleanor was in the background. I think she made a lot of decisions. I think she had a lot of power in that White House. I mean, can you imagine being in the White House without? A spouse that is as bright and capable, you know, because you know that that's the best person to discuss things with, okay, and the one who's gonna, probably going to give you the most direct feedback, the one things that you may not want to hear from either source. So yeah, you're talking about some very good couples. So here's the dilemma, a person at one and the same time, and needs to be a conforming member of a winning team, it has to be a star as well. So a lot of women tend to be members of winning teams, right? The question is, are we making any progress in being the star? So I'm getting, I'm getting long here. I'm uh, short on time, but what's the glass ceiling? Well, yeah, Olivia. Um, but is there how hard you work or how many opportunities you think you have? or? team that you have, there's always a limit, and you can never surpass the limit that's already set for you. So it's said that like, for many women who want to move up, they're only going to get so far if it's out of their control. So I had people tell me that I better move out of the University of Rochester because they would never come let me go any further than I was. 
told to be by the women, okay, uh, women administrators, as you have. Who is that crap? You better leave because they're not going to let you do anything more. That's pretty crap. That's pretty crap. Is if Hillary wins this election, have we broken through yet another glass ceiling? Mm -hmm. yeah. for, for America, we sure have. Okay, for the United States, so there are many women leaders, right, of other countries. Okay, but for the United States, it's still there. So, um, that's the glass ceiling. Can any of you felt that glass ceiling? A lot. Think so? Probably not very much. Not at the level that you're at. I think that has changed. Okay, I think the Fed has changed. Okay, here is a, because of the position, I have some data. So the percentages of female applicants to U.S. medical schools, you can see that it actually, in 2004, was the highest peak it ever was. Recently, as of last week, there was a headline that says, women are now peaked for the number of uh, applicants over the last 10 years. And I said, let me go back to this. Okay, wow, the media doing it again. 10 years, as far as I understand, this is 2016, right? So in 20, so in 2006, we were all been already down from the peak, right? That just means we went down even further, and now we're back up to 2006, but we're not back up to 2004. Okay, and I thought, wow, this is interesting. You know, that here, we haven't gotten back up there. What's the sticky floor? So sticky floor is a phenomenon in academic medicine, and I suspect in law and other things, so I can't tell you for sure, where fewer women are promoted or given institutional resources at the start of their careers. So apropos to the STEM push in this country, in, in, in the world, getting women into science, technology, engineering, and math, or medicine, okay, those are the, the, the big STEM opportunities. The question is, is there a sticky floor? And what that means is when you come out as a PhD and you go to go get your first job, are you getting the same resources, not only in salary, but in support, okay? <coughs> if you go to a university these days and they're recruiting you and you start your first job in your first home laboratory after your postdoctorate, you need to get about a half a million dollars.